Um, and David and I head uh, co-chair the placement community of practice. And um, one of the things we did uh, last semester is we focused in on uh, how we support international students for placement. And then we were asked by the executive really to put that together um, for the wider audience of AHEX. And so what we've done is um, we've, if you bear with me now, um, we've basically uh, looked at there were three um presentations given from three different universities um and what we've done is we've pulled all that information together um really looking at so for the, we'll present for the first 20 minutes uh, what the context is you know the student expectations the challenges that and this is coming from those three presentations and also the discussion that happened afterwards in the community of practice um, and then looking at the support students need employer engagement so after the hopefully 20 25 minutes uh, we, we want to open it to for discussions you know to hear about those challenges what, what if there's any initiatives that you're using uh, that you're finding useful um, and it's really that collaboration and sharing of information. Um, so firstly, um, just in terms of, sorry, no, it's not moving on. Uh, so just in terms of setting the context, uh, in um, we're seeing a diverse, and this is primarily looking at, well, focusing on postgrad, but also we're looking at undergrad as well. So uh, diverse uh, student uh, demographic, graphic with you know many different needs um our international students continue to rise um i know for ourselves here there's a mandate that that our student uh, population of international students inbound would be about 25 percent um and then there's the move from the government to basically internationalize higher higher education um and students themselves are very motivated and very ambitious and um, it's trying to manage those expectations uh, for students. Uh, I often say um, from our unit here, we are not a graduate recruiter. We don't have a bag of jobs, but we our ethos is to help you build that capacity within yourself um, to enter the labour market and to secure your own job. So it's trying to we'll talk a bit about that um, later on. Sorry, it's taken a while to for my screen to move. So if we just look at international stu student in numbers, um, and this is coming directly from um, HEA, we have uh, an estimate of 17,000 students uh, from outside the EEA here studying in Ireland. It's worth 1.15 billion to the economy. Um, and the average tuition fees come 10 to 20,000 more if it's actually um, from, a me um, say, medical programmes. Um, sorry, it's just taking a while. Let's go this way. Okay, um, so for student expectations, and I'm sure none of this will be new to many of you, um, you know, in terms of studying abroad will enhance their employability and their career prospects. Uh, for many students, they want to gain employment in Ireland, and that was definitely something that was shared in the community of practice across the universities, um, that they're coming here to, doing the courses to secure employment. Um, they're looking for that pre-entry support. Um, they expect one-to-one -one support from services. Uh, for myself, um, uh, I uh, we have a number of, we have six different regions uh, involved in student recruitment, and I met with each of the, the reps in those regions um, before um, December. And it was very clear there was a wide spectrum of needs. So spectrum from the Americas looking for that one to one support, uh, even though you might be enhancing your engagement with uh, technology, they still want that one to one support to then into Eastern Europe who don't usually have a careers service in the universities and wouldn't even know how to engage. Um, and many of them are seeking internships as part of their programs, seeing it as a way in to uh, secure uh, employment. So for a lot of the students, what was discussed in our session at the time, it's, you know, they're having to deal with a new country, they're dealing with a new culture, there's new skills required of them, and which ultimately means there's a new version of themselves that they have to, to, to bring to the to university, but also to the labour market. Um, so for a lot of those challenges we're seeing for students is that cultural awareness. Um, many of them just arrive in September, particularly at a postgrad level, and um, at that stage, 
they, they, they're coming in mid to end of September and we know that a lot of the, the graduate programmes are closing early October. So they're just here and they have to think about starting to get um, uh, jobs. Um, is there social integration into, into the Irish colleges and um, understanding our labour market from what it means? Um, for vast majority of students, it's trying to map and convert their results uh, so that they are able to articulate that to employers and also for many employers, they don't they don't know these universities, they don't know the courses um, and, and don't understand yeah, what their results mean. And is it you know, a two one or a first here equivalent to that? And what's that equivalent to in the universities of their um, host countries? Um, definitely language skills is a huge challenge. There's a heavy reliance on assistive technology um, and very clear lack of fluency of English for industry. So we we talk about or we spoke about there's there there's a fluency to see as a student in terms of recruiting the students here. There's a certain level of English. Then there's a certain level of English required from an academics perspective. But there's a total different um, fluency required for the labour market and for working in industry. Um, and we're seeing that as a, as a big challenge. Um, for, you know, we all know about the cost of living and securing accommodation. It wouldn't be uh, many students are living in hostels when they come in um, or even uh, living in hotels um, and have no permanent accommodation initially. Uh, that sense of belonging uh, and friendship and trying to and homesick is very much something that's prevalent when they first arrive. Their confidence, um, particularly, um, you know, once they start seeing that uh, they're not being shortlisted for jobs, they're not they're not getting placed if there's a placement associated with their program. And um, we really see lacks of confidence there. Um, there's a general challenge on how to sell themselves and how to present themselves and um, how do they articulate their skills? Uh, how do they link that and their experience to what the employers are looking for? And then simple practical things in terms of uh, getting and securing a PPS number. They used to be able to do that before they came. I think I was talking to someone in revenue. That's now uh, going to be difficult. They need to be here. Um, and then registering with revenue, having the right documentation, the, you know, if, if submitting even one form incorrectly could delay their, um, their application for weeks. And this just all adds to their stress. So in terms of one of the things we looked at, uh, uh, well, what are the current supports uh, for students um, in other universities as part of that placement um, community practice session? Uh, so for many students they are looking at, or for universities, they're looking at really catering for the diverse student need through uh, tailored employability supports. Um, looking at pre-departure and orientation program sessions uh, and also um, tracking and leveraging alumni mentoring for mentoring, but also they need to hear the, those success stories. Where have others in their programs gone before that are international students? What are the, who are the employers are hiring how, and listening to the I suppose the gra that those graduate alumni uh, their success stories of how do they navigate the labour market what how do they maintain resilience um uh, what were the strategy they used to secure their roles um so they, they, it's really important to provide that mentoring and connection to alumni and in, in addition they don't have the social capital that we have so often in Ireland it's not what you know it's who you know and they're coming and they don't have that so really for for a number of, uh, of universities they're you know having and facilitating their connections to international alumni um early detection and intervention so seeing if students are struggling um you know, and, and collaboration with other supports within the university, such as counselling, disability, if you have student advisors, welfare officers and so on. So in order to, to support students. Um, so, for example, I know we have students who, you know, have heard that other students in the previous year did not get jobs and they're still there's a year of their stay back visa already um, gone. And basically they're already having anxiety that that will be them too. So having to direct them to counselling to, to, to really help them manage that anxiety. Um, and looking at developing employability plans. So some universities uh, look at how they can help them promote that self-agency capacity. And um, a lot of the time, they, you know, the expectation is we have the jobs, here are the jobs. And it's a little bit of a shock that, uh, you know, we actually don't have the jobs. We we 
help you with developing your employability skills. Um, and so for us, for example, here, we direct a lot of our students to the Employability Award that really informs them and connects them with employers as well. Um, so in addition then is, I, I mentioned earlier, one of the challenges that students have is those uh, presentation skills of themselves. Uh, you know, how do they address gaps in their CV? Uh, they, you know, really help helping them to tailor their CVs. Uh, you know, standard, um, what we would see as standard employability skills uh, is quite new to them. But one thing that was highlighted actually in the discussion as well, that the, a number of them have very poor word processing skills um, and also helping them articulate their work experience and as I said, those conversion tables for results that they would all need for uh, their CV and then also in their interviews and supporting them in interviews. Um, the, the biggest thing and the biggest challenge is the lack of job readiness for our international students. So it's addressing those job readiness through one to one coaching, uh, helping them identify their USP, building their personal brand. If you have AI tools to support CV and interview skills uh, that might be easier for them to use, particularly if there's a language barrier. Um, and, and, and and it's really about, and I know one, uh, Breed might be on the line here, but uh, one of the key things is saying, um, it's putting the person in front of the employer. Um, so trying to, to, to create those opportunities to sh showcase their skills uh, within your university so that they're not just seeing a CV with a name with a name that's not uh, Irish, but that they're meeting and seeing the person there. We're trying to uh, educate employers around the value that that they will bring to their organisations, and so putting the person and 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 showcasing their skills, um, and and also not all uh, students will be suitable for graduate programmes and graduate roles, and so it's recognising based on their experience that they're coming with, really helping them target the right jobs that they need to be applying for um, and that understanding and um, I know for those jobs that are on the skills critical skills list and um, you know the employers will be a lot more open to that um, but it's looking at those the challenges are this what the jobs that are not on those lists um, and that's where the challenge particularly for employers will come in so yeah, we, we talk about employer engagement as well um, and how do we how do we highlight the benefit uh, of hiring international students? Um, you know, we can say the increased diversity, bring a global perspective, their previous ex uh, experience. Um, there's challenge um, in terms of hiring pool and available talent at the moment. And um, there's retention challenges at the moment. Um, and and uh, you know, the international students and the graduates actually tick a lot of these boxes. Um, but you know, it's easy easier said than done. Right, so it's really, as I said, creating one of the things we're looking at is creating employer champions. So, you know, we know the employers that have hired these students already. We can use graduate outcome survey to look at that and we can look to see what employers have hired in the past um, and creating opportunities for employers to get to, uh, to meet and hear from other employers um, who can hopefully dispel, you know, a lot of um, uh, uh, misinformation. So I was at an event recently and we talked about this and we said, you know, we're hiring international students, but you're not. We're, we're bringing international students for study, but you're not hiring them. And it was discussed and, and really said to employers that you need to be open and you, you have these challenges of hiring and recruitment uh, talent pipeline. Um, and after the conversation was discussed in detail uh, in the sort of informal coffee setting, I, met, I spoke with two employers and uh, it didn't matter what we said, it was basically, uh, but they wouldn't they wouldn't fit into our culture. And another employer who was a champion um, of, of uh, and hires international graduates turned, no, they wouldn't fit into your culture, they would add to it and they would improve it. Um, and so having that champion there it, um, and, and that particular employer really shared their experience to these other employers and is trying to dispel those myths around why not to hire an international student. Um, so it's really education employers as well. They have uh, around the two year stay back visa, but also the sponsorship process afterwards. So they don't necessarily have to sponsor the student afterwards, um, but it's it's supporting students and employers in understanding what that process is. And um, I think it's also we need to 
as a group here, uh, you know, um, if internationalisation of, of our education is something on the government agenda, then we need to be lobbying employer bodies, government associations at that national level. That is, you know, it's, you're, you're asking us to recruit in. We are being, they're being used to supplement our income and our funding. Um, at university level, then we, we really owe to them in, in terms of ensuring that there are opportunities. What's interesting is actually in the destination survey last last year, 70 percent of uh, international students secured employment. So there are employers hiring them. And so it's building that network of employers who are open to hiring international students, knowing who they are from your university universities. Um, and as I said, through that as well, leveraging international contacts within the industries, uh, building that social capital, building that mentoring for our uh, students, creating those success stories. Um, and that also can be used then in your student recruitment um, in terms of uh, securing students and uh, encouraging students to apply to your universities. So just I wanted to share uh, from the three universities sample events that are run to support international students. And um, so uh, I know in UCD, uh, I, th I think it's uh, UCD, they have the Jumpstart Live. It's a set of program uh, events throughout a week that is used to support students. Uh, we also have a number of events here in the University of Galway navigating the labour market. We bring in Deloitte to talk about visas. Um, and uh, just just I think we're all doing the same things and having events, but I think the, the need from the student is that one to one support in terms of employability support, but also I think uh, looking more outward and thinking, you know, uh, strategies around how do we um, educate employers about international hires, how do we encourage them um, to, to look at them as a solution uh, to their talent pipeline and um, that they're actually very challenged at the moment to secure. And that's it.